Hi, my name is Adam Troop and welcome to my review of the SLR Magic 10mm T2.1 Hyper Prime Cine Lens. This is, I'm recording with it just now and I'm running through a field! So the lens is really well made, it's got fantastic build quality. Let's take a closer look with some motorized slider shots. As I mentioned, the build is excellent. Both the focus and clickless aperture rings have a lovely smooth movement. They aren't difficult to rotate, but definitely won't shift by accident. As you can see, they're both natively geared for using follow focus systems, but there's absolutely no problem using them by hand. Let's shoot some time lapses. One of the most attractive optical features for me on the SLR Magic 10mm T2.1 is the amazing lens flare. You can see here the effect you can get. I just think it looks beautiful. This lens is really well suited for use on a gimbal, electronic or mechanical. What's really interesting about it is its 10mm focal length, which will give you a field of view of around 20mm when you're not using any kind of extra crop factors in a micro four thirds camera. So shooting 1080p on a GH4, 4K or 1080p on a GH5. But what's also quite useful is when you're shooting 4K on a GH4 with that extra crop factor is it will give you around about the 24 mil standard focal length field of view. So let's take a look at some sample videos on a gimbal. Currently shooting in 4K on the GH4, so we've got that extra crop factor. And I'm going to show you how much wider it will look when we're not using the crop factor and getting more about that 20mm field of view. So you can see here we're in 1080p, so we're getting the full 20mm field of view. So just to give you a back and forth comparison, no crop with crop, no crop with crop, no crop with crop, no crop. So, for my final test, I've decided to take nothing but the GH4, the SLR Magic 10mm and a tripod to film a family day out at the zoo. She says, wow, yup, that's a crocodile. Good girl. 
Oh, lovely. Yeah, I might as well go this way. Are we going to go and hear about the, the bear? Is it the bears in here? people in the zoo. Are you scared Lizzie? They let the lions out soon. Oh, no. um. <sighs> so it's actually snowing as you can see. It's literally taken me that long to finish this review. Uh, that's what children will do gonna take up a lot of your time that you would have otherwise been spent making YouTube videos and reviewing lenses and such things. So let's get to it. What do I think of the SLR Magic 10mm T2.1? Well, do you know what? I was really happy with the Olympus 12mm f2, which I guess is quite a sort of comparable lens in terms of, you know, uh, specifications. Uh, there's some big differences, obviously, but Having the Olympus uh, 12mm f2, um, you know, I didn't feel a burning need for this lens. But what I found is that extra width, you know, because um, equivalent focal lengths, you're looking at 20mm versus 24mm, which is actually fantastic. And since um, using the GH4s, I've started basically shooting almost everything almost everything in 4K now, which on the GH4 you get that extra crop factor. And I know a lot of people are gonna be using GH, GH4s for quite some time, so this is a lens to consider for those. And um, getting your, your 24 mil lens back when you're shooting in 4K, you know, and getting that, you know, nice sort of F2 uh, aperture and light gathering ability is really, really fantastic. But then when you shoot 1080p or, and I, I, I would love a GH5, but you know, I've just got, too many cameras right now. I'll get one at some stage, I'm sure. On the GH5, obviously, you can shoot 4K 50p without the crop factor, which amazing. I would love to be shooting 4K 50p at 20 mil f2 on this lens. That would just be amazing. It's, I mean, as you can see here, I think I've got it at um, at t 2.8. And, uh, and you know, you get some nice background blur. I've done T2.8 because I just, you know, I'm in front of the camera and it's a little bit harder to judge focus. So I want to give myself that little bit more, you know, uh, chance of making sure I nail the, the focus. Because uh, F2 at this kind of distance, I mean, you can get some really nice uh, background blur subject separation. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I, I love that. I love wide lens, fast wide angle lenses. You know, I just think they're fantastic. And where this, apart from the extra field of view, where this lens really, uh, you know, where I would choose it over the Olympus, um, a couple of things. Number one, I showed you the lens flare. Beautiful, I just, it, it looks fantastic. With the Olympus, you know, you just get your, your modern, you know, uh, fairly characterless, you know, uh, no, nothing to, to really, you know, mention, nothing worthy of mention. With this, you know, it's like, when I'm shooting first dances, for example, or as you saw where the sun was in shot, um, I would purposefully try and uh, place the, the, the point of light, so whether it's one of my own lights or the sun, off to the, the edge of the frame, you know, or at least move it through that just to get that beautiful flare effect, which looks fantastic, you know, so the, the flare is great, that extra width, as I mentioned, T2.1, fantastic. But the other thing is the fact it is fully manual focus, which 
When I'm shooting events and things, I quite often use multiple cameras. In fact, it's rare that I use less than four cameras. I've got three GH4s, and at the moment I'm using a, an A7S II as my primary camera. So having you know um, uh, these additional angles are, are great for me. But then what I quite often do is I'll set the focus on the lenses and then you know basically set them up and I'll go away um, and then come back and restart them just before I actually need them to record. I don't want to record for like, you know, half an hour before, say I've set them up for a ceremony or something, shooting a wedding or whatever event it might be. With all my other lenses, all the focus by wire lenses, you have to refocus them. Whereas this, obviously it's nice, it's good to double check your focus, but with this, you can be sure turning your camera off and on is not going to shift the focus at all. And, um, and, and yeah, so I mean, there, there's, and, and the build quality as well is just beautiful. And obviously if you use follow focus, you've got those, uh, those follow focus gears built into the lens, which is great. Smooth aperture, really nice. That's worthy of mention as well. So there has been a number of occasions where, you know, I, I've been, I, tested out the lens and you know seeing mm, how, how would it potentially fit into my uh, you know kit you know um, when would I likely to be use it I, I didn't see when I first picked up the lens if I'd really use it that much but actually there's been a lot of situations where it has been the go-to over the, uh, the the closest competitor that I've got the the Olympus 12 mm f2 uh, for all I've just spilled my coffee so would I recommend it for stills photographer as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it just purely depends on what you're shooting. Um, I mean, I've got some beautiful pictures with this lens. I mean, I'll put up an example just now, uh, a picture I took of my daughter with a chicken at a, a nearby you know, place where they have chickens and butterflies and stuff. I think that's enough rambling. I think you've kind of got the gist. A lot of people like me to just gather my thoughts. I've spilt my coffee again. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been entertaining and informative. I've really tried to, you know, have a bit of fun with this one. I was putting a lot of work and tried to make it a good one. So if you liked it, give me a thumbs up, you know, subscribe. I'll have more videos in the future coming and I'll see you again later.